we saw the downward accelerating force caused by what we are calling gravity. Fascinating thing happened on uh, Globusters YouTube channel just in the last 24 hours. Um, but what is fascinating about it is it had uh, Geronism on the uh, the Globusters channel, and Geronism is basically a professional uh, flat earther. So he does flat earth for a living. Um, but we also had uh, Bob Nodell. He is the uh, the famous flat earther that revealed that uh, he did a gyroscope experiment that proved the Earth was spinning. And also on this channel, we on the on the show we had uh, a guy called the Morgyle. He's basically fresh out of jail, um, and he's not a professional flat earther either. He sometimes begs for money on some uh, as on on his YouTube channel, but um, he is basically unemployed. Um, sort of ex-con. Um, what's fascinating about it is that uh, Bob Nodell basically uh, proves that gravity is actually a real thing and, and it's just fascinating to see Geronism sort of spluttering and because uh, he's basically his whole rug is pulled out underneath him and uh, it's it's pretty amusing to see him desperately trying to cling on to uh, to his uh, flat earth world because his whole world is crumbling his whole uh, income stream is being demolished pretty much in uh, in this Globusters episode so um yeah just be thankful you don't have to sit through three hour three and a half hours of it these are the highlights evidence and, and honestly you know I, I gotta tell you guys right now i've got i've got two videos that are absolutely they're nukes they're nukes essentially they blow the relative density argument so far out of the water um, that it's, it isn't even funny, you know, so I'm just going to say that whatever gravity is, you know, whether you want to call it an acceleration or a force, if it's a force, well, that's, that speaks for itself. But if it's an acceleration, then every definition in physics tells you that there must be a force to create an acceleration. Okay. What I would ask is what is the difference between up and down? I would say it's most dense versus least dense. The, the most dense direction is the ground. That's where it, it has to be, it has to have gone somewhere. There has to be, otherwise, if there was just disequilibrium and things went wherever the hell they wanted, there could be no structure to the earth that we live on. There could be no world for us to reside in. Things would go everywhere. Your atoms would move every different direction. Your, your head would, you know, you couldn't exist. So there has to be some order, and that order is simply sorted by relative density. I mean, there's, you know, if something is less dense than the air that exists below my feet, then it's trapped there. Because if it was let go of there, it would certainly rise. It would come back to, to, to equilibrium. Everything wants to be in equilibrium. But the fact that there's uh, a lot of forces going on and the sun's heating up the atmosphere and causing different elements and gases to uh, rise up to become more dense, and then they get cooler and they come back down and causes the cycles of air. The fact that rocks here, rocks are in equilibrium when they're on the ground because that's where their density has led them to reside. But why would, why would do I need a force pulling at that golf ball at a constant or not constant at some sort of varying force couldn't it just be that the well, item has been displaced from its equilibrium well no, no? but right. I, I will i will get to that but i i have proof and i'm going to you know present it but i i just kind of let's well, just say i want to yeah, set you up okay <laughs> um so, so why why set us up though i mean why i, I because because really because... understand the purpose of that like just to show that you're right and we're wrong I no, really no, 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 really it is not, Jaron, Jaron, you're getting defensive, buddy. I, this well, is not about being, up. well, on, I'm saying, all you right, I, me maybe that was the wrong term. I'm setting okay. up, I'm setting up the scenario. Okay. I didn't mean I say I'm setting you up. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I got you. No, that isn't, right. that isn't what I meant. I'm sorry if you took it that way. All right. Well, it sounded like you said, I'm setting you guys up and kind of chuckled. That's, exa that's exactly, if you rewind the tape, that's what you did. Uh, well, <laughs> so okay. So I'm just saying, if you have proof. All right. and, and maybe, maybe a little bit. Okay. Maybe a little so, bit. All right. All right but, I'll let you go. go ahead. Okay. The, just, just let me have my, my moment. Okay. <laughs> so this thought experiment is going to take place in outer space. Let's say I had a container and inside of it had a little bit of water, a little bit of motor oil, a little bit of salad dressing. In other words, say I had this, this density tower in space. Okay. Or whatever. The top of the density tower, I have my ball bearing. And on the bottom 
of the density tower, I have my neodymium magnet. And let's just say at the bottom of the density tower, I also have a layer of ice. Okay, so I've added that in. So now when I release the ball bearing and the magnet, and we have our density tower in between it, now what's going to happen? The ball bearing is going to travel through the, the layers until it hits the ice. Now I want you to think about um, if you have that density tower itself and you don't have any magnets uh, in line with it, no magnet, uh, nothing like that, you have a density tower then in space, um, just like the one that Sleeping Warrior likes to use with the like 14 different layers of something, and you have that cherry, okay, and you have the cherry above the density tower, no magnets, no nothing like that, and you let go of that cherry, now what's going to happen with the cherry? I have no idea. It's probably I would just... say I would say that it wouldn't move at all. You're right. It wouldn't. Yeah. And why wouldn't it move? Because there's no force or acceleration applied to it um, to cause it to move. Very good. That's exactly right. Now, I want you to think about if you took all those things, the, the, the motor oil, the water, the juice, the, the honey, whatever, and you shook it all up and you're in outer space, and then you just let it go at arm's length, what would happen to the density tower? What's going to happen to the liquids inside of it? I would say the like liquids would randomly sort of coalesce into little bubble, uh, little spheres, if you will. Um, but you wouldn't get the sort of uh, layers that you would expect here on Earth. You're exactly right. So why? Why wouldn't you get those layers? Well, because you don't have any quote-unquote gravity uh, that, that you have here on the ground. So you have no downward accelerating force, right? Right. All right. And I'm going to bring up a video, and I'm going to show you something here. Now, this is a college project that was done on a vomit comet. This is not Imagination Land. This is real life. Nine different fluids. Okay, and this, of course, is the density tower that, that uh, Sleeping Warrior likes to use with the dish soap water, everything, and the cherry in between and all that stuff. And as you can see, you know, here on Earth, with a downward force, the, the uh, layers, the honey corn syrup and everything, layer perfectly. Okay. Let's turn it over to John to see the fluid in action. The density tower. We've got different liquids, different densities. So right now we're in the hypergravity, so you can really separate. We have FP72, water, and vegetable oil. And as soon as we hit zero, as soon as we go into microgravity, well, you'll see. Zero. In conclusion, when we take away gravity, we take away up and down. With no sense of direction, neatly ordered systems like our density tower start acting all chaotic, with everything going in all directions. Well, I'll tell you what we just saw here. We saw the downward accelerating force caused by what we are calling gravity. So, uh, my earlier assertion of what I said that I wanted to prove here <clears throat> is that to show without the so-called force acceleration effect phenomenon of gravity, the concept of relative density and buoyancy are rendered moot. It's just the, a falling frame of reference. The zero-g plane is not in zero-g. Anybody who tells you that is completely confused. It gives the illusion of yes. zero-g. And he mixed up the density tower. The very first thing he does is mix it up. I'll go do that right now. I'll... He did bloody well not mix it up. You watch. He was holding that as steady as you can in a plane that's doing a freaking dive and the liquids just separated out without any shaking whatsoever, which you can clearly see. So stop your lying. Stop your lying, jism boy. Hey, real quick too, uh, when the plane leveled out, 
the uh, the liquids separated pretty quickly, like within a couple seconds, I guess, because of the extra uh, forces, you know, because when you're at the end of that parabola, that at the end of that curve, you get double the regular acceleration of uh, quote-unquote gravity. 